All right. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, I am Brock Fanning, um, Drupal developer for six or seven years now, and um, recently the maintainer of the Drupal theme for the US web design standards. Um, I started that project just a few months ago in May, and uh, have been hitting it pretty hard. I'm currently working on a Drupal 7 site using the standards, and also a Drupal 8 site using the standards. So I'm doing both at once. And the theme, uh, as we'll talk about, is uh, there's versions for both Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. Um, so uh, first, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the web, US web design standards itself. Um, I didn't write it. It's, there's a whole team uh, who's been working on that for years now. Um, and I guess I can start with just a little, just a personal uh, look at how I got to know it and how I um, found out about it. Uh, it was probably a year and a half ago. Um, I was working at a government agency, still am, but um, we were in a meeting and someone said, hey, the, there are these standards, um, we should check it out. Um, and we looked at it and of course the immediate thought as a developer, my, my first thought is, wow, this is going to be a lot of work. What, do we really have to make these changes? You know, is, uh, you know. So I, I was just, just thinking, wow, do we have to do this? And it looked cool. It, it, was, it was a very uh, slick uh, interface. Uh, the, the user interface looked great. The style guide looked great. But we looked at it, and then we just moved on. We didn't really pursue it. Um, because we had we had a site that was already made, already running, and it's kind of a tough sell to totally redo all of your style, you know, your, your your CSS and everything. So um, fast forward to just four or five months ago, um, there's in my in my own agency there are rumors of like redesigns coming up, and uh, new projects, potential for new projects. And so all of a sudden, it's becoming a lot more attractive. Um, you know, it's, it's easier to think about incorporating something brand new on a new project or a redesign than to try to work it into an existing, pro an existing site. And um, there's a lot of reasons that it's, being, that it's been very popular um, in, my, in my agency. Um, and we'll, we'll go over those uh, shortly. Um, I just want to also give an overview of uh, what we'll talk about today. So uh, I want to just say what exactly are the US web design standards and, and then go on to how, how to use them and why we should use them. And uh, then do a little bit of a demo of the, of the Drupal theme just to show you what it can do and um, just talk briefly about some modules that are applicable to this theme. Okay, so um, there's, there's, there's a site, I mean, I can just go to the actual standards site, and this site will do a much better job of explaining what the standards are than, than I would be able to. Um, but I guess I can start with what they're not, and that is a requirement. Um, the first thing that you might think of when you hear the US web design standards, okay, there's a new requirement. Now every government site has to comply with this set of standards. Um, and that's definitely not the case. Um, there are um, videos on this, on this site. This is standards.usa.gov. There are video webinars that they um, uh, have recorded. The team, the, the, the uh, Web Design Standards team has recorded. And they go into great, um, great detail about um, the, the question of, is this a requirement or not? And the answer is no, it's not. Um, it's, they, they took the approach of, let's make the easiest thing the best thing or vice versa, let's make the best thing the easiest thing. Um, and the idea is that 
people will just want to use this. It's not, they don't have to require it. It's just a useful thing, so everyone would want to. And they obviously, they want people to, to use this. They want this to be a government-wide um, practice. Because part of the point of this is to have a, a something, something of a standard look and feel across all the government sites. It doesn't, have, doesn't mean that all government sites have to look the same or have the same color scheme or logos, but they want a basic uh, familiarity across government sites. And so the team uh, would like people to use it, um, but it's not required. There's no requirements. Um, the, the next thing is, uh, well, no, so moving on to what it is, I think of it as a couple of different things. Um, and on the one hand, it's a set of advice and guidelines. Uh, there's, on that site, on uh, standards.usa.gov, there are tons of um, great pieces of advice, um, and especially in this UI components section here. Um, there's just a whole lot of sections to that, and each one has some advice, some, some code, but first of all, let's just look at some of the advice, like for example, like there's little usability sections to some of these things. Line length. Um, you know, here's a section about line length. So what's, what's a good practice for line length? Um, I would recommend reading through the entire, this entire section. Just go one by one and read every section of this, this page. Um, it's, it's just a lot of good advice, basically guidelines, to, and designed to help you make your site accessible and usable um, and easy to understand. Um, but on the other hand, it's also a code library. They, they didn't just make a bunch of proclamations and say, this is what you should do, now go do it. They wrote a library, a whole, a whole front-end framework, essentially, that um, makes it easy. Um, and so that library is uh, open source. It's on GitHub. Uh, Um, and it's got a lot of CSS, a lot of JavaScript, uh, and you plop it on your page and it makes all this stuff work um, in combination with uh, the markup that you have on it. So that's basically what it is. It's a set of advice and guidelines, and also it's a code library, it's a framework. Um, as far as what, it, what does it mean to use it, uh, and this is a this is a tough question, um, and it's something that's worth probably going over with your uh, your development teams, um, because at first it seems like using it is going to be some something of a chore. You know, it's like okay, I have to go through all this stuff. I have to make sure we're following all these best practices. I've got to tweak markup and um, all that. It's actually not quite, it's not as hard as that. Um, and there are, different way, there, there are different levels at which you can use it. Um, for example, you, you can follow some of the advice, pick and choose which pieces you want to use, or you can follow all of the advice. Um, you can use some of the code, like components here and there, or you can use all of it. Um, and then you can write your markup so that it follows the advice, and so that it um, works with the library. Um, so one thing that I like to do, that I, that I um, did with, with my teams, was to just go over this site, uh, the standards.usa.gov, go over this UI component section, and look at some of the choices that they have. For example, in the headers, section here. Um, it's talking about you know, the header of your site. And then as you go through, there's a few options. There's the basic header, 
which looks like that. Um, you know, simple one-line menu, the drop-downs if, if, if you want, and the search bar. Then there's the basic header with the mega menu. The drop-downs have multiple columns. And, and then there's extended header, where the, there's basically two horizontal menus, one down below the logo and one on, up to the right. And then, of course, there's the extended with a mega menu. And that can help just kind of get people thinking about um, how to use these standards in uh, using this as a base. Um, so instead of just thinking, well, I've got to read, read through a ton of stuff and follow a bunch of best practices and change all our markup, you can take a look at some of these choices and pick one and just kind of start, start there and just use that to, to get the you know, creative juices flowing. Um, because that's what it's intended to be, it's like a baseline to, to start you off. Um, so as far as why to use it, um, it's, for, for one thing, it, it gives you a whole lot of stuff out of the box. Um, and that's, that's a huge thing. It's just, just a, basically a time and a money saver. Um, it gives you accessibility. It gives you usability, meaning like it, it makes the site easy to use and it makes the, it makes the content on your site uh, easy to understand. Um, it also has responsive design kind of built into it. You really don't have to think much about that. And uh, it has, well, this last thing I have here, it has an authoritative aesthetic. And that's kind of, um, that's, um, well, so it's the US web design standards. It has that name, like this is a, a sort of authoritative thing. And um, it has its own aesthetic to it. And if you've ever been working on a project and gotten to that committee by, uh, design by committee problem where there's just a lot of people um, getting input and I think this should have a pop-up and this should be a sidebar and, and it, it can kind of get bogged down with um, too many people offering advice and, and like all the stakeholders basically wanting a change. Um, this gives you some authoritative source to say, okay, well this is, sorry, this is what we're going to uh, start with and when someone gives you, when someone asks for something that would go against the standards, in other words, it would sort of um, interfere with one of the best practices, um, then you have some leverage there. You can say, well, no, we're, we're, we're using this web design standards and uh, we're, we're gonna stick with this as our, as our baseline. So um, that's very attractive to some people. Some people would, you know, that maybe you might think of that as like a hindrance, but for a lot of people that's attractive because it gives you some sort of a foundation uh, to um, rein in all the crazy ideas that you get um, from uh, the stakeholders. Okay, so um, I'm gonna just demo a little bit about the, uh, uh, demo the theme itself. Let me just pull that up here. Um, so I've got, uh, I'm starting off with just a basic um, Drupal 8 site um, that I just installed. And I will start things off just by enabling, oh, well, okay, actually, the first thing we gotta do is to create the, the base theme, oh, sorry, the, the sub theme. This is a, just like any other theme um, on Drupal, you typically want to create a sub theme of it, so you don't wanna use the base theme, um, because then it would be tough to pull in updates when it gets improved later. So, um, there is, let me just get this out of here. Okay, so the base theme here is the USWDS, and um, creating a sub theme of it is very easy. There is an examples folder, which is right there, and you just copy out 
the examples um, theme. I have it called my sub theme, but you can rename it to whatever you want. And you copy that out into um, wherever you want to put your, your themes. So now I've got this theme here called my sub theme. Oops. And if I go into there, it's got some basic stuff. There's one file that you have to rename. You just have to take off the rename me. And then that's basically it. Now you, you can enable it. Just like any, you know, any other theme. And I'm going to go up to, let me log in here. So now I'm logged in, I'm going to go to Appearance, and I'll set my theme as the default, and then go back and see how it looks. So it doesn't look great, um, because we don't have the uh, assets yet. Um, the library, the, the USWDS library. I don't include that in this theme, because the Drupal, you can't, typically you don't include third-party things in, in the Drupal project itself. So. The, you've got to get those in some way. You can download them uh, and unzip them pretty, from their site very easily, and, and there's instructions how to do that. The easiest way um, is to have Node and NPM installed, and you type a command called NPM install. Uh, hopefully this works with the Wi-Fi. But um, it's, it's really the same either way. You're, you can either download them in your browser and then unzip the file, or you can use this to, uh, in, to install them in the NPM node fashion. Um, this has some benefits also in that it gives you a, a script for compiling your code later if you're going to use the more advanced workflow uh, for maintaining your, your code. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, so that worked. And after that runs, there's this new directory called node modules. And so I'm just going to copy out um, the USDS dist folder. That's basically all the assets. And I'll call it assets. And let's see if this helps. Oops. Probably need. Drupal 8, it seems like you have to clear the cache almost after everything you do. All right, so now it looks better because it's pulling in the assets. It's finding the CSS, it's finding the JavaScript. There's still some things about it that look a little bit weird. Um, and that has to do with block placement, essentially. A lot of the configuration will be block placement. Um, so let me go to structure, block layout, and let me just take out some of these some of these blocks that just appear, I'm not sure why. Um, oops. Um, let's see what else we got here. So, just a little tour of the, of the regions here in the, in the block page. There's a region for every menu. So there's a region for the primary menu, a region for the secondary menu if you have one, 
Um, there's a region for the mobile menu, which is when, when you know, on mobile, when the screen shrinks to a certain point, you can, you can choose to use a separate menu at that point. Um, you can also put menus in the sidebar to get the side navigation style. And then down here, there's a footer menu also. But let's save this and see how it looks. OK, it looks a little bit better. Now, um, I'm going to go over to the appearance page again and check on the settings for the theme. Um, there's, there, there are some options here. And so if you remember earlier, we were talking about the different header styles. This is where you can choose between those. There's basic and extended, which correspond with the, um, sorry, the extended and basic headers. So let's try extended. And uh, this, this is where you can turn on that banner that shows up at the top. Um, find this, this banner up here. Um, you can just turn that on or turn it off. It's, um, it's something that they recommend. It's not required, but it's kind of recommended as a little piece of government branding that can pretty easily show up on, on all these sites. Um, so you can turn it on there. Um, there's different types of footers as well, and this corresponds to the footers section of the standards where there's what's called the big footer, there is a medium footer, and a slim footer. And these, these settings, you can choose that. You can choose between those. Um, and let's say that for now. And take a look at how that looks. All right, so um, so now that's showing up at the top. I've got this is the secondary menu here, and the uh, primary menu there. There's not much in it. Let's create a little bit of content. So oops. All right, so now we've got a little bit more to work with. Um, fresh. So here's some content. And I think now we've got some better menus. So I'm going to go back into the block layout. I'm going to take out this main menu here. And put in one of these that just got created. This one. Don't need the title. <clears throat> secondary menu. I'll take out the secondary menu. And put in. Oh. Okay. So now there's a little bit more stuff there. Um, if I want to have the search bar show up there, um, I got to make sure that the search module is enabled. Yes. And I can go to the appearance section and find my settings again and click this display a search bar, a search form in the primary navigation. And I think I've got to <coughs> clear the cache. Okay, so there's the search bar and it's the kind of thing where you, 
click, and it turns into that. And that's all provided by the, uh, the library, the, the web standards. Um, Let's take a look at side navigation. Right now, there's there's a menu here that only has one thing on it. So let, actually, let me go to again to block layout and go to my side uh, the first sidebar region. I'll take these out. And I'll put in. Um, one of these new menus. All right. So that that's so that gives you some idea of um, the side navigation and how it kind of. That the hierarchy of it gets displayed. Um, so we've got now um, the secondary menu here, primary menu, sidebar menu, and a lot of other things just kind of work. Like you'll notice these links are styled using this the button style of the the, the web standards. Um, the type, the typography, the fonts, and everything, it it generally works. One thing that's nice about the library is that it doesn't it doesn't rely on certain classes to be in your markup. Um, there are classes that you can use to trigger certain things, but in general, it, it it's written in a way that it just works on any markup. Um, it like for example, form elements are styled just by being form elements. You don't have to have certain classes on the form elements itself, which, which means that things generally work and you don't need a bunch of modules. You don't have to have some other modules or integrations with other modules in order to get things to work. Um, there are some cases where there's, there are things that can be done, but uh, in general, it works pretty well out of the box. And let me um, take a look at the, okay, so the administration theme, like right now it's set to seven. And I'm going to turn off this thing so that you can get, get a feel for what forms look like. So let me... Oh, so let me just edit this. This is a node. So I'm going to edit the node. It's an article. And um, so this is, you know, just kind of out of the box what, what the form elements look like. Um, and things work pretty well. Um, you've got these, in the library, these are called accordions right here. Um, in Drupal 7, they used to be called vertical, ta vertical tabs or something like that. And you know, now, they're, now they're called details usually, but this is um, accordions in, in the, uh, the standards. And um, they're, pre they're pretty slick. They look, they look good. Um, the standards does great things with checkboxes. They, they, they go to a lot of trouble with checkboxes. It's, it's doing some, some stuff there to make them easy to click and look nice and, and be uh, accessible. Um, and uh, I, guess, I guess that's about it. So, like I said, things, things work pretty well out of the box. Um, there are a few things in the standards itself that are more like templates. They're more like larger com com complex components. Like if you go to this page template section of the standards, um, it gives you uh, an example of a landing page. And it has this hero at the top, the, uh, you know, the giant image that goes all the way across with a call out in the middle. And that, the code for that, uh, let me find it here. Okay, so here's the code for that hero section. You can say, you, you can see it has a few classes in it. There's the USA hero, 
class, there's a USA Grid class, and the callout class. And these are all triggers to, um, to the library to style it in that particular way. Um, and you can, just by virtue of having the library installed, you can use that markup and, and it'll work. It'll look, it'll look correct. So for example, I could go try to, uh, there's a region called hero in the theme. I could add a custom block in there. Um, let's use full HTML and I'm just gonna paste in that chunk of code from, from the standards website. Um, zero image, and save. And uh, I think I probably have to clear the cache. Ah, what did I do? Huh, didn't work. Okay, let's try that again. Um, oh, here it is. Don't need the title. Okay. Save. There it is. Um, so that's that's cool. It, you know, you you just need to use certain markup, and then it'll look like it's like it's supposed to. Um, in Drupal, though, we we tend to prefer more uh, chunks of things as opposed to a blob. Like that was a blob. I just pasted a bunch of markup into a text field that would be called a blob. But in Drupal, we prefer to have more chunky things where it's like. Here's the image. Upload the image. Here's the t here's the callout title. Uh, do that, and so that um, that's the kind of thing that we don't want to provide in the theme itself. Um, that's the kind of thing that should be provided by modules, and um, so that's the point at which we have to kind of connect with some other modules. So far, um, I've got uh, integration going with the paragraphs module, which is pretty popular um, these days. Um, and the, I've created a module called USWDS Paragraphs, which I'll show. Um, and all this module does is, if you enable it, it creates a bunch of paragraph types, which are kind of like node types, and they let you um, create elements and uh, create some of these more complicated elements and put them in onto the page. Um, this is a screenshot here. So some of the things it lets you do are the hero image. There's a paragraph called hero. And it has, you know, you, you add the paragraph to your page and it, you accept the image, talk, the call out text, and so on. Um, there's also this section right there. You can see there's like a, a column thing. So there's, there's a whole grid system in the web design standards um, where you can have grids of uh, half, half width, quarter width, one third width, one sixth width, and so on. And um, there's a paragraph called uh, column, and you can, a paragraph type called column, and you can create columns and position them however you'd like. This is um, an interesting one here. This, with the icons, this is a sort of a work in progress in the uh, web, web design standards. There's, let me show you a little like backdoor page site. This is components.standards.usa.gov. And this is where uh, the team kind of keeps track of all the components that they've got in the library and how ready they are to be released. You can see there's one called the graphic list, which is uh, yellow, and the, that WIP means work in progress. So they're still working on it. Um, but generally, that's kind of the direction that they're heading with this. It's sort of a grid uh, to across of these, these image, title, paragraph combinations. And um, I, put that, I went ahead and put that into this module. The so there's a paragraph type called the graphic list that you can use. Um, and there's also a paragraph type for the accordions. 
So if you want to create these accordions in your, con in your content um, and have the collapsible sections of text, um, you can do that. Um, and it's just to give you an idea of what it would look like, I'm going to enable it. Paragraphs, oh, sorry, USWDS paragraphs. It relies on the paragraphs module, which itself relies on the entity reference revisions, and they all get enabled at the same time. Um, and once you've got it enabled, there's a new section in your structure called paragraph types. And there's a little bit, there's, there's quite a, a few, but some of them are, are intended to be used inside of other ones. So there's, there's the accordion item, which goes inside of accordions, so you don't have to worry about that. It's mainly the accordion that you, that you want to worry about. But once you've got this, uh, like say you wanted to have a, um, you know, put the hero, have a hero block that you don't have to, you don't have to mess with markup, you could use a paragraph uh, for the hero. And you do that with custom block types. So there's, there's basic block here. You, you can manage the fields. And we'll just take out the body field and add a paragraphs field. So this is getting into a little bit of site building stuff. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't intend to make this be like, here's how to you know, configure paragraphs. But um, I just wanted to show you um, what it would look like. And I'm going to do, uh, so this is a paragraph field that holds one paragraph. And that type of paragraph will be a hero. This is a one-time thing that you'd have to do when you're setting up your site. Um, and then after that, when you want to create, a, a, when you want to add a hero, you could go to the hero region, and hit place block, add a custom block, um, and you know, this is you can give it any description you want. Um, it has a image field, uh, a call out title field. It has a, and there's two links. The the web design standards template for these heroes has one uh, regular text link and then one, one button link. So um, and they're both optional. So I'll just do the button one here. Um, Also, we have to position it in the hero region. I don't need the title. Let's see if that worked. There it is. So that's how you would use the paragraphs, the, the, the integration with the paragraphs module to do some more complicated components um, as opposed to just pasting and markup, which both works, but this one's a little bit more Drupal. Um, all right, so that, that was... <laughs> All right, so I think that's enough demo. So uh, I just wanted to real quick uh, mention a few of the uh, modules that are just notable. Like I said, you don't really need a lot of modules to, to integrate this, but it's worth mentioning some. Uh, one is just that one I just demoed, the paragraphs, the USWDS paragraphs module. Um, also, panels and panelizer is kind of makes sense because there's a grid system with, with the, uh, the library. And it would make sense to have panels layouts that fit within the grid system. And we've got that already in the Drupal 7 version of the theme, and we're working on the Drupal 8. There's, a, there's an issue on it. Um, I, I should mention that the site, the, the, the project is you know, still under development. Uh, it, it's, right now it's in beta release, I'm calling it beta. Um, it's very usable, I'm using it myself to develop a couple of sites for, for clients. Um, but pretty soon we're going to go ahead and give it a stable release and call it version 1. Um, also, there's, a, there's just, just a little tidbit about um, WYSIWYGs. So, um, 
so you might want to have give editors a little bit more freedom to do some of the stuff inside the, the editor, the WYSIWYG, the, like CK editor in Drupal 8. And um, that's, that's very, very doable. There's, um, there's a section on the project page where I mention um, how to get stuff into the CK editor style dropdown. So you can, you can let editors just select some text on, in their, their body of their, their content and give it the button, the USA um, button style, or the gray button, or the outline button, or any of these other ones. The lead, lead font, which is you know, for the little section of text at the beginning of an article that needs to be larger than the rest of the article. Um, so there's that. And also, um, there's this module called Collapse Text, um, which is pretty simple. Um, uh, filter module for Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, and it gives you the ability to put little, it's a short code module basically where you can put uh, collapsible sections of text in, in your content. And it works out of the box with the standards just because of the way that the library works and the theme works, is that when you, when you enable this module, it will give you those accordions instead of the, collapse, the normal collapsible text. All right, so uh, I think I'm running a little bit late, so uh, any questions about anything? Uh, yeah? In that paragraph example, can you show us the responses on that? Sure. Yeah. Let's take a look. So, Put it out. Sorry. Sure. Anything, but I, I think you can configure that. <laughs> oh. Let me let me see. Um, so if you're using SAS to uh, maintain your code, so there's a couple of ways to maintain your CSS with this. You can either not use SAS, you just use regular CSS files and layer your CSS on top of the libraries so that yours overrides what the library is doing. The other way is to use SAS, which is where you use the library SAS files and you compile them along with your SAS files, and so everything is compiled at once. And that's, it's more advanced, but it's, it's better because it, you don't have to override things, you don't have problems with specificity where you're not sure whether your override is gonna work. Um, I think, so let me go to style sheets, uh, core uh, variables, That yeah. library would go inside my sub theme, so I can have that as part of my build. Right. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to promise anything, but I, I feel like I've seen a way to configure that prefix. So it's USA. If not, we could add it. I guess. Yeah, it could be a pull request um, for well, the library. But I'm pretty sure you can just change that prefix so that it's changing. Yeah. I was looking at your guidance for buttons on the site, and I saw 
recommendations of colors of the buttons um, to indicate the action the button would support? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I'm not familiar with the icons and buttons question. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm probably the wrong person to ask okay. about that. Um, but I do, I can speak to the colors. Um, all right, so in terms of buttons, there's, they have what they call primary, secondary, um, and there's different choices for the, like the secondary. Um, and they show what it looks like if it's focused, um, if it's disabled, there's a big button in style. And um, you can control those colors, especially if you're using the SAS approach. It's very easy to just change one variable in the SAS and then recompile, and then all the colors across the side are different. Um, so you can control those colors, but they, they have a lot of great advice and, and recommendations about colors. There's a, there's a whole section about palettes. Um, and yeah, I'm just like thinking about using colors to indicate what the action is, just a visual cue of what the action would be. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if there's specific, um, well, they probably, there probably is. If you read through this section, I'm sure there's some stuff in there about, um, you know, the, the purpose of all the different variations. It, it, the main focus of this is accessibility, because you're trying to make sure that you never have a situation where the, the contrast is too low and people can't read the, the text. Um, but I would definitely read through this, this section. Yeah. On the subject of accessibility, do you know that the standards have been updated in anticipation of the new 508 standards that are coming out in January? Yeah, the, the WCAG. The, yeah, the new 2.0. Yeah, I'm January pretty sure. Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they've been targeting that, that standard. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you pull your icons from? You know, like search icon or all the other little things you have in the library? Or? Those are all in the in the library itself. Okay. They're, they they have a. Uh, um, there's an image um, image folder where they have a lot of their own icons that comes comes with it. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, but I can't speak to that, but um, I, I do know that a lot was done. And this is one of the big benefits of using this library, is it wasn't just a, a coder just saying, this is a good idea, do this. This was like a huge project with a big team and you know, years of, of research. So um, I would go to standards.usa.gov and go to getting started and video tutorials. Um, there's, there's several videos, and I would just go to the bottom and start with the, the first one where they introduce it. Um, and that was a few years back, but, or a couple of years back, I think. Um, but just to kind of get, a, get more of an idea for what they did. It was like a webinar style where they, they talk for a while and they give uh, you know, question and answers. All right, any more questions? Oh, okay, thank you.